This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water, and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com. I don't know if it's always <clears throat> been a moon, but that's probably the most popular version of it when you see it. Yeah, you know? like but in cartoons. I do, I do think it brings in some light into the... I, that's what I thought. Maybe it's space. ventilation, but why the moon But why shape? a moon shape? Uh, yeah. That is a great question. Probably because it's more privacy. If you had a sun, there's like a bigger yeah. hole to like view yeah. what you're doing in there. Yeah, so maybe that's sun, why it's like, just like... <laughs> maybe that's why it's the moon. Partial, partial right. privacy. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little partial sliver. Viewing. You know? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the Zulu Podcast, where we talk all things poop, toilets, and sanitation. Through insightful news, impact stories, and quirky humor, we aim to discuss and highlight the critical role toilets play in whisking poop out of our lives, the impact toilets have, or lack thereof, in the health and wellness of humanity, and what Zulu is doing to help solve the current global sanitation crisis. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another fantastic episode of the Zulu Podcast. Um, I am actually going to let Suzanne introduce uh, the interview today because she had a really cool experience making this whole thing come together on the other <laughs> side of the country. Um, but yeah, tell us a little bit, just intro about who we're interviewing today. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Today, um, we're going to be interviewing um, Kevin Tang. Um, I spent a good part of the summer in uh, New England, the summer, specifically Massachusetts. And I was out there watching TV one day and this this report came across the screen about a couple of students from MIT and from Boston University that were creating a toilet seat that lifts up and lifts down. And I was like, what? Are you serious? Like, this is prime <laughs> Zulu material this, right exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah. And so I get my phone out and I take a clip of, you know, the information and I looked him up and um, found their website, phone number and call Kevin. And he was just so great and so gracious. And he said, absolutely, I'd love to meet for an interview. And so that's what happened. I ended up going to Boston University and we had a great little interview. So awesome. Even yeah. on vacation, I Suzanne know. Never is stops. thinking toilets. It's well, amazing. Twitter. Toilets. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How can I think we a lot of us think about toilets on vacation, but you were thinking about it for altruistic purposes. Yes. Yeah, sure. yeah. So yeah. Awesome. So. Well, we're going to dive into that a little bit later, mm -hmm. but Darren, what do you, you have a big fat, what looks like a textbook over there. What, what yeah. is this? This we're super excited about. And I've been meeting, I apologize, um, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Wigley, who is the uh, former president of the um, Portable Sanitation Association International. We've mm -hmm. had them on the show mm -hmm. okay. a couple of times uh, over the years. And uh, this, he sent a copy to me. This is a history. If you're ever curious about where are these portable sanitation where do these porta potties come from? How long have they been around? Mm -hmm. He's got the whole history of portable sanitation all in one volume. Wow. Of uh, how many pages is this thing? Uh, <laughs> Who full, knew? <laughs> full color, full color, uh -huh. just uh, even pictures you probably never thought you'd see, right? About portal sanitation. Uh, just talking about not only the history of portal sanitation in general, but also the, the association. Um, I don't know how many pages is this. Maybe they didn't put page numbers. No page numbers. It's just <laughs> thick. <laughs> but uh, super cool volume. Uh, we hope to put this up on the marketplace. But uh, anyway, for you um, researchers out there, for you, uh, you know, if you're doing your, you know, doing a book report. Or, <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. Or if you just ever, you know, wow, man, I just, I just. If what you need, was the earliest if year? If you need a good bathroom book, right? Oh, there yeah, you there go. you go. That's I mean, there's, there's nothing better material. than putting this on the back of the toilet seat mm -hmm. and just, you know, you'd be there forever, you know. How early was the earliest um, porta potty? I mean, are we considering an outhouse a porta potty? Because that it, it kind of seems like the first iteration. Yeah, they, they were. I mean, again, I Jeff, you know, Jeff's going to have to correct me, but. Uh, um, they were originally designed based upon your original uh, footprint of a of a, of an outhouse. If you see the old fashioned outhouses, mm -hmm. and that's literally they were made out of wood, mm -hmm. right? And they but somebody figured out, well, why don't we just take one of those outhouses and put a put a tank underneath it and then move it around, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and um, it really didn't. I mean, it it um, kind of really took off during the during World War II when they had to. 
Okay. All of a sudden move masses of numbers oh, of yeah. people mm-hmm. and like shipyards and, and manufacturing plants and that kind of thing where they, you know, it takes a while, as you know, right, to build, you know, permanent toilet systems. But these were, it kind of had, it got a, got a good boost there. And then of course, um, yeah, it's all, you know, the, the different materials that they're made out of evolved where they were making them out of, um, instead of, uh, wood, you mm-hmm. know, which was hard to clean, right? Right, wood right. Is a little bit different. Um, we're going to talk- would absorb a lot of the- Yeah, yeah. absorb some foods. odors. <laughs> um, they moved on to fiberglass, which was, you know, better. A little better. But Great. still, they, you know, issues. And then, of course, as plastic technology has evolved, they've certainly done that. And I yes, so. uh, question. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. I know I have the answer. First, first <laughs> question is about outhouses. Is it just my- memory of like maybe watching too many cartoons, but did outhouses always have a moon on the door? Do you, do you have that memory too? Like a cut out moon on the front door? Mm -hmm. Why? What was the point of that? And why was it a mooning? I don't know. I know. Cause I, yeah, that's what I always (laughs) associated with, but Uh I doubt that's the real reason. I think it's a, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if it's always been a moon, but that's probably the most popular version of it when you see it. Yeah. I I do think it brings in some light into the, I, that's what I thought. Into Maybe it's space. ventilation, but why the moon? But why shape? a moon shape? Uh, yeah. That is a great question. Probably because it's more privacy. If you had a sun, there's like a bigger yeah. hole to like view yeah. what you're doing in there. Yeah, there's so a full sun. You just want the moon. partial. Partial <laughs> privacy. Yeah. Maybe a little Partial sliver, viewing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You've got some information here. We got. Oh, real- oh. Thank Trevor's you, on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Trevor. Check you out, man. You want to come on? <laughs> come on down. We got instant, instant fact check here. Um, it says here, the common, um, supposedly before the adoption of the more familiar male and female bathroom symbols. Oh, okay. It was common to use a crescent moon to denote that an outhouse was for women. <gasps> oh, that's and interesting. And a sun to denote that the outhouse was for men. Hmm. Okay. I think it'd be the opposite, but. Maybe maybe it is a little less, maybe a little more privacy. I don't know. That is that is interesting. Huh. Uh yeah. What's the source here? Uh is this just Google? I have to say that the porta potties now were pretty impressive because you go in and they don't smell. They're like, amazing. It's they were yeah. terrifying when we were kids. I know. Do you remember? They like, were. You would rather you... just go in your pants <laughs> than have to walk into the one of those things because you'd pass out. I know. That there smell was so, would just it was bad. Hit you yeah, in the face. Here, uh, I would is... avoid it at all costs. Yeah. But now I'm like, no, it's not. I so can bad. go in there. It smells good. Yeah. Like, so this is this is yeah. This is another source. Another source. Atlas Obscura, um, 1800s. Um, literacy literacy wasn't widespread, so the common symbols used for differentiate men's privy. And a woman's was the man, the man's door carried either a sun or a star symbol. Okay. And the women's uh, were marked with a moon. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So that's uh, really interesting. interesting. I'm mm-hmm. sure there's a sexist reason behind that. <laughs> no. <laughs> so? But I can't think of one sun, right moon, now. Sun, stars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like you guys control the daytime. We're only allowed out at night. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The ladies of the night. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, because when else, when else, as a woman, when else would you use an outhouse? Probably at night. I don't know. Yeah, that's what do you mean when safe. else? You be- <laughs> You're using all the <laughs> if, if If you even go at If all. you were allowed. If you if were allowed. Even allowed yeah. I can't remember my other question. So okay. anyway. But anyway that's well, cool. you, you can uh, you know read up, yeah. you know, and return and report. Um, okay. So yeah. So this that's, association uh, is in the U.S.? Yeah, mm-hmm. Portable Sanitation okay. Association International. These are cool and pictures. uh they're mm-hmm. super um you can check them out at psai.org. Um okay. and I think um you can order also order a copy of this, but uh I don't know how much it costs. But anyway, Jeff just has done a ton of research on this and uh anyway. Awesome. Very super cool. excited to highlight it. And he sent it to me a while ago and just now highlighted it. So anyway, but yeah. Thank you, Jeff, because that is pretty fascinating. Yeah, pretty fascinating. So yeah. All right. Thank you, Trevor, for the instant, yes, thank instant you, knowledge. Instant <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Are we doing poo news or? We got some poo news. Okay. Um, you know, we talked about portable sanitation, um, you know, porta potties being made out of wood, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you could imagine why, right? Absorbing odors, mm-hmm. you know, hard mm-hmm. to clean, right? Um, um, question, snap poll. Okay. Uh, what's dirtier, more 
bacteria, germs, uh-huh. a cutting board oh. in, a, in a kitchen or a toilet seat. Go. A, wait, a, wait, uh, what's, a, is this a wooden cutting board? Yeah. I would say the wooden cutting board. Yeah, me too. Sadly. <laughs> then a toilet seat. Yeah. Yeah. Just like your phone. It's exposed to more <laughs> stuff. Maybe and hands and two hundred times more wow. bacteria on a wooden on cutting a wooden board. cutting board than a toilet seat. So, it's you know, amazing I survived my childhood. I, well, that's what she's gonna say. We so we're freaking out boards. over nothing. Like we're fine. <laughs> and, you know, funny how you know you're <laughs> laying now, paper you down know, on it and you're uh, just really care. And the cutting board, oh, I'll whip that out. I, <laughs> I just had this experience before we started recording. I went to the bathroom and I was like, Jocelyn, just sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling yourself. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't really? do it. I didn't have any oh, problem pu- chopping vegetables. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is all it's in our heads. It's all mental. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, but now you notice people don't use a lot of wooden cutting boards. It's more the plastic, right? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so that's true. So there's... So um, maybe... Because you can throw those in the dishwasher mm-hmm. and it's not as high maintenance. The wooden ones look much nicer, but they, do. they absorb a lot of... Yeah. So yeah. Um, let's not talk about how many germs are on your cell phone because then we're. <laughs> I clean my self, cell phone every day. Very good. I wipe I'm probably down ruining too. it with all the yeah, alcohol. <laughs> um, yeah. 200, 200 times more fecal bacteria <gasps> on a cutting board. And people are. People, and so she posted oh, no. this, this article is about a gal, a nurse who posted this online and everybody was trolling her. What? How, 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 you get poop on your cutting board? It's like, no, it. it um, from the um, vegetables not being it, clean? It, oh yeah, it gets it gets on there from from various sources and um um and this was and this has been backed up by uh by other some other um scientists. Uh, so she um that's uh let's see Charles Gerba, PhD microbiologist, University of Arizona, been studying bacteria contamination, and they studied um 82 hand towels. And they determine, and then this is also hand towels, right? Like mm-hmm. just hand. that makes sense. Um, and but don't use paper that, towels um, for everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they found uh, that. Yeah, it's very common to. Uh, um, I use a lot of paper towels. I admit, I know it's not great for the environment, but it feels more sanitary. It says, yeah. it, it says in most cases it's safer to make a salad on a toilet seat than it is no way. to make one on a cutting board. <laughs> I mean, not for sanity purposes, it's yeah. not. But I mean, so we live in a world of bacteria and germs. Like we can't get away from it. Mm-hmm. It says here, it how, how, do you, how do you sanitize a cutting board? They say lemon and salt, you know, okay. it's like very, oh, that's cool. very easy. You don't have to do a lot of chemicals. I mean, uh, lemon and salt, Yeah, you know, just clean it up right on there and uh, maybe Squeeze use that same on. thing for your toilet seat. But uh, <laughs> actually that's a great idea. Anyway, uh, I thought since we were talking about toilet seats today, we'd talk mm-hmm. about this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, another news article real quick. Um, um, Brad Paisley, is he familiar? Like mm-hmm. Yeah. Country West? I'm yeah. not a big I thought fish. for a second you were going to say Brad Pitt and I got real excited. No. Okay. But hey, I also Paisley's, like Brad Paisley. He's adorable yep, too. He yeah, he's a country He married that cute artist. girl from Father of the Bride. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he has a pretty popular uh, song, uh, I guess his... His uh, wedding anniversary song. He wrote a song for his wife, and um, um, got the lyrics here. But uh, talks about the toilet. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> the, the secret. It. He says the secret to his happy marriage is putting the toilet seat down. Oh, <laughs> well, this and, ties into a conversation we were just having. Yeah. Um, maybe they're not making salad on it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I think anyway, the lyrics, uh, uh-huh. uh, she's not into flowers or getting big, big expensive gifts. She doesn't want jewelry. She doesn't want another dress. And if I want to show her how much I adore her, the best way that I found is to make sure when I'm finished, I put that toilet seat, seat down. down. <laughs> there you Love go. It. And uh, anyway. Truer uh, words were never spoken. Yeah. yeah it I was so that. romantic. I thought we'd play it. That's fair. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Can we play it? <laughs> sure. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Um, I've seen him live. He's great. He's very personable. He He's came adorable. to the 4th of July celebration okay. years ago. Okay. Just awesome. going to show up. She's not in flowers. Getting big expensive gifts. <laughs> 
Jessie don't want jewelry. She doesn't need another dress. And I want to show her how much I adore her. The best way that I found is to make sure when I'm finished, <laughs> I put that toilet seat down. <laughs> oh, I love that. Anyway, super popular song. It's really simple, yeah. everybody. Very right. simple. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's if you're really simple to please women, yeah. really. If you're struggling with your marriage out there, it's a maybe bit it's of as easy as a toilet seat. <laughs> Put the toilet seat down. down. Well, speaking, speaking, speaking of, of toilet which, seats, yeah. yeah, that's a perfect segue into your interview with Kevin. Yeah. So, let's hop into that. Perfect. Hey, Lou friends. So we're here at Boston University and we're so excited um, to meet with our special guest today, Kevin Tang. Kevin is originally from Jersey and Salt Lake City and he is a graduate from Boston University and him and a few of his friends have developed these amazing new technologies in the toilet space. So we're just going to go ahead and turn some time over to him and Kevin, just tell us a little bit about your background and your story and how you got into this, um, this interesting space. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, my name is Kevin Tang. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of Kleena Inc. We are a Boston University and MIT technology startup. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we make some of the best toilet seats in the world, right? And primarily we make two different product lines right now, right? We make non-electric automatically lifting and lowering toilet seats. So the reason that we made these products right here, by the way, we have mm -hmm. two, uh, two early models of the self-closing seat. We have right here, a really interesting early prototype from okay. many years ago that I just thought would be cool to show. Mm -hmm. And then over here, we have a um, one of the newer uh, models that were all completely 3D printed of the self-closing seat. So we'll be happy to show those off. But basically what we do is we make automatically lifting and lowering toilet seats and they treat different purposes or they treat different problems and are meant for different places. So um, the first product line we make is a commercial automatically lifting toilet seat, mm -hmm. which unlike this one does not have a cover and it has, you know, kind of like the split gap in the middle. It's right. the public okay. toilet seat that we're all familiar with. And basically what it does is it detects when it's not in use and it lifts up in between usages. And what we basically discovered is that by making this simple change, you can keep public toilet seats up to 90% cleaner than wow. a standard toilet seat, right? So the problem that we were essentially trying to solve was Dirty toilet seats, you know, right. like everyone hates them. How do we fix it? Right. And that's amazing. 90%. Okay. Yeah. Great. And you said that originally these were um, 3D printed. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So, you know, we're, we're a technology company. We constantly focus on like the newest ways of manufacturing, rapid prototyping, going through different iterations very quickly. And practically all the technology that we've developed has been with very, very high levels of additive manufacturing, other kind of like novel methods. If you look at these uh, two models, they were completely 3D printed. And for folks who know 3D printing well, these are very, very large pieces. Mm -hmm. So they took many hours and it took um, some really novel approaches to really make sure that the print quality came out um, all right. But yeah, they're, they're 3D printed. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So tell us how you kind of like fell into this at the beginning. Like you were sitting around and how did you come across the idea of like wanting to get into this industry? Yeah, definitely. So I do want to get back to the residential okay. seat, which is a part of the story, right, of how we came to it, because it was sequential. It was one than the other. It wasn't both at the same time. But essentially, the way that our company started was, you know, we were undergraduates at Boston University and MIT. And, you know, a couple of friends and I, we really wanted to start a company, essentially. And, you know, we weren't necessarily exposed to the most niche problems in the world. So we just kind of had to look in our everyday lives as to like, kind of like, what is a, a common problem that a lot of people have that we can potentially solve? And the problem that we basically decided to orient ourselves around was the dirty toilet seat. You know, right? <laughs> like everyone hates it. There's not a person in the world who wants to use a dirty toilet seat, you know, right? Amen. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that we learned is that in addition to just being like a horrible thing to run into, mm -hmm. It's like a real problem for businesses as well. You know, dirty toilet seats obviously damage your customer perception, which can be a really big deal depending on what right. kind of business you are. Obviously, a lot of money goes into real estate. What a way to kind of ruin the impression to have, you know, urine or whatever on the seat, you know, right? Um, but in addition to that, 
you know, it also has a really big impact on cleaning time, cleaning labor, which are very expensive. And these aren't particularly pleasant jobs. Like people who are custodial staff don't want to clean dirty toilet seats. It doesn't matter if it's their their job, you know, right? right? So there's that. And then on top of that, you know, right, there's an entire industry of single-use paper products, such as paper toilet seat covers, which are non-recyclable, really bad for plumbing, piping, stuff like that. And, you know, these are a direct result of people trying to find ways to cope with using dirty toilet seats, right? So these are some really serious problems. And basically what we wanted to do was come up with a really simple and elegant way to, you know, prevent seats from getting dirty in such a way that it actually would begin to uh, proliferate into the industry. To, to make a long story short, there is not a shortage of ideas right. around keeping the toilet seat cleaner. The real problem is how do you do that in a way that it meets the constraints and the requirements of the business of the user and stuff like that, right? So it really necessitated making it a simple and elegant solution, which is what landed us on our first product, which, as I said before, is an automatically lifting seat. And basically, the observation that we had is that Um, or it's a survey, it's not an observation, it's something that we actually measured. It's that 75% of men will not lift the toilet seat ever before (laughs) urinating um, in a public bathroom, right? right? And the new joke we have is that I think that's a stat that 100% of men will agree to, will believe, (laughs) right? Yeah, they'll believe that 75% of men don't do that. They just go in. And then there's what happens at home, right? And that same, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, that was our first product line. So just to put in a nutshell, it's an automatically lifting seat. It detects when it's not in use, lifts up. If someone lowers it, we made a novel mechanism that will also keep it lowered so that people can sit on it. You know, you have time. If you have older folks who perhaps, you know, require a little bit more time to unzip their pants, Mm -hmm. get on a bowl, um, it will stay down. And then on top of that, it also has a detection method such that if someone sits on it, it can sense that and adjust the timing such that when you get up, whether it's five minutes, 15 minutes, a half an hour, an hour, Mm -hmm. it will also remain down so it doesn't slap you in the butt, you know, right? (laughs) It'll remain down. Uh And after, you know, the person leaves the stall, it will smoothly lift up, you know, right? So that's the first invention. You brought up the residential seat. Right. Mm -hmm. How did we get here? Um, And just to be clear, the residential seat is the exact opposite. It's an automatically lowering lid and seat. And actually, like, while I'm talking about it, I will put this model up so that... And this is because you spoke to some women, right? That's right. So we did not come up with this one uh-huh. originally. The story is, is basically we were making this self-lifting seat. And obviously, as a part of that, we were talking to hundreds and hundreds of users about their experience and what was important to them. And essentially, we noticed this pattern where when we talked to women and we said, hey, we're making a self-lifting seat, the question was, why would I ever want that? Why is that something I would desire in my life? And we're like, well, that's interesting. Why do you say that? And there there it goes goes Uh right there. Uh And essentially what we learned is that in the home, there is a strong desire to have the exact opposite happen Mm -hmm. for a number of important reasons. First and foremost, on the part of the women that we talk to, um, they don't want to fall into the bowl. It's an extremely common occurrence for a gentleman, presumably, to you know, leave the seat and the lid up. A woman comes into the bathroom, whether it's during the day or especially at night, and we'll just, you know, obviously it's a place they're familiar with. They'll sit and if the seat's up, they're going in the bowl. And this is- Right, or you're sitting down and it's extremely cold. Or if you're pregnant and you're going to the bathroom multiple times at night and then they're like, oh, they didn't put the seat down. (laughs) (laughs) So it leads me to um, uh, an interview I heard once um, uh, that someone did with Johnny Cash. Mm -hmm. And they were asking him, what is your advice on a happy marriage? (laughs) Okay, and so- (laughs) His his only piece of advice was separate bathrooms. <laughs> and I thought that, yeah. you know, and there and then people were like, that's it? There's not anything else. You don't have any other tips about like, you know, date night or, you know. And he's like, nope. He's like, separate bathrooms. <laughs> and, so, put, and put the seat right, down, presumably, exactly. which was a part of that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Of course. So. Okay. So. Great. That's, that's just amazing. So. When do you anticipate that you're going to be able to have these like on the market so that people can actually purchase your product? Yeah. So our commercial product is going to be coming to market first. Once again, this is the residential one right here. Okay. Um, that one is going to be coming to market later this year. We're currently manufacturing with a really good partner in Asia. The residential seat is going to be a little bit behind that and will probably be you know, sometime early next year. Either way, you know, the technology is, you know, very mature at this stage. You know, we have a lot of patents filed 
And, um, you know, they're coming to market. And I'd say one of the really amazing things that's happened is that, you know, we've had a good amount of publicity lately just mm-hmm. because people have found, you know, our story and these products really interesting right. and their purpose interesting, yeah. you know, right? And we've gotten, you know, loads and loads of orders on our website um, at cleana.co where, you know, people have just gone on and just said like, hey, this is something that- That's fantastic. You've got orders even before the product. That's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so when that does happen, we would probably want to have you be a guest again, and then we can, you know, link you to our website as well. So on our marketplace. Yeah. That's right. And then we can see like, uh, you know, kind of like what people think when there's thousands of them in the market and they're no longer running into the problems of falling in the bowl or things falling in the bowl or their kids getting in the bowl and stuff. Like, it'd be really interesting to see that. Yeah. Yeah. You had mentioned a little bit earlier that when you designed it, you were thinking a lot about more, um, you know, spaces like in cities where people don't have, you know, big toilets. So can you elaborate a little bit like why that was another reason to have the closing? Yeah. So I, I'd say like one of the really, just, just taking a quick step back, I think like one of the really interesting things about like this company and the journey that we've been on is that using the bathroom is something that we all obviously have like a very intimate kind of like relationship with, and we all have our own experiences. And to that extent, I think there's a lot of like assumptions you can make Mm -hmm. about like, kind of like how most people use the bathroom. But the real learning experience has been over these past four years that we've been running these companies that when you, it doesn't matter who you talk to, Mm -hmm. you will find that there are new ways that people interact with it and new problems that they have with it. Mm -hmm. Right. So like I said, we didn't initially come up with this. We came up with this because we made a lifting seat and a lot of women were like, Why? I, give me the opposite, <laughs> you know, right. right? So naturally uh-huh. when we took this concept forward and we kept, you know, uh-huh. talking to, um, you know, a lot of other folks about their bathroom at home, mm-hmm. we just learned that there was a lot of other issues, serious issues in the mm-hmm. bathroom that could be solved by having a lid and a seat that went down if mm-hmm. people didn't. Um, remember to, yeah, remember, remember to put it down. Or, right. So you had an automatic one. Uh huh. Yeah. And you know, some of these problems mm-hmm. were, you know, we talked to a lot of parents, you know, right. People will be like, you know, I have toddlers, I have young children, mm-hmm. right. We were speaking to this one mother in particular. She said, you know, I have a three-year-old who likes to stack things on the rim of the toilet and we'll just knock it in, you know, <laughs> right. And they'll flush it. And I have, to, I have to fish it out. Me, the mother have right, to fish yeah. it out. That's horrible. And that's gross. Right. Mm-hmm. She's like, I also have a nine-year-old Mm-hmm. who has retainers. And when she reaches for the soap too quickly, which we store on the wash tank, retainers go in the bowl and it's uh, happened four times in the last month. You know, right? So, and those are not, inex- those are very expensive retainers. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she replaced it. I think she cleaned, <laughs> which isn't, yeah. I, well, this is, this is true. But I mean, just the thought of it is like, oh yeah. For, yeah. To have something that expensive and that custom made to go in the toilet is not good. Yeah, it, it's exactly right. And then on top of that, we also have a lot of pet owners who come to mm-hmm. us. And I feel like it's a very classic thing. Like Buddy, the the dog, just goes and drinks out of the bowl if we leave the uh, <laughs> the lid up. And, you know, frankly, like maybe people don't think about this too too much, but I don't think you want your pets or anyone really digging around that water. Like one question I have is how frequently do people clean their toilet bowls? Mm-hmm. You know, right? And on top of that, even if they do clean it, they're cleaning it with like very, very harsh chemicals. Right. The chemicals in toilet bowl cleaners are like Drano particularly, really, really not good. And you probably don't want, you know, your your pets, you know, drinking any of that residue, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, the last thing I would say, and then like there's a slew of other softer reasons to want the linen seat mm-hmm. down, which we were talking about before. But like, you know, the last thing that we basically discovered is that particularly here in Boston, where we are right here, you can see there's beautiful Com Ave right there. Um, in a lot of places, it's very typical, especially if you live in older buildings, to have smaller bathrooms. It's not mm-hmm. a very normal thing unless you're in the suburbs, actually, to have mm-hmm. bathrooms with extended right. floor space, yeah. right? And what this means is that there's a tremendous amount of people who have a number of medicine cabinets, shelving, countertops, mm-hmm. or just stuff around their or hooks near their mm-hmm. toilet that are used for storage. And one of the most common things that we've heard from people is, I dropped my AirPods in the toilet. I dropped my phone in the toilet. Mm-hmm. I knocked my toothbrush in. I knocked right. my medicine in there. I've heard stories of people- Makeup, my hairbrush. Right. I've heard stories <laughs> about makeup and makeup dissolves when it gets in the uh. water. So that's done. You know, right? There's uh. no cleaning that, right? So there's a lot of other folks who just drop stuff in the toilet. And I think, you know, we ran a, statist- uh, a, a survey with about 2,000 respondents across the country and the response we got back was that about 69% of individuals had reported that they dropped a phone or another valuable 
in the toilet at some point. Wow. And AT and T, AT and T, the large telecommunications company, lists it as the sixth most common way people ba- break their phones. Wow. So it's, it's like- not uncommon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uncommon. Yeah. A lot of people on the toilet use their phones. It sounds like, or just in the space. Yeah, exactly. Wow, there, there's six. There, yeah. there's a story. If you go into an AT and T store and you bring them your phone, you say like mm-hmm. it's broken. I think it might be water damaged. Hands up. Right. You're like, what kind of water are we talking here? <laughs> you know, right? right? Did you clean it? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. But, um, yeah. Well, yeah. Like you said, it, it just helps solve a lot of, a lot of issues, a lot of things that are common, commonplace. And as we know, a toilet is related to every human on the planet. So this is a great, great business model. So I'm wishing you the best. I think it's going to be exciting to see how this all unfolds. And like I said, we'd like to follow up a little bit later, you know, when you actually get everything to market. So do you have any last thoughts or encouraging things to to say that could be inspiring to other people that are wanting to create something as an entrepreneur or <laughs> any suggestions? Or I, I forgot what the adage is. I think I'm going to like mess up the quote, but okay. it's like, if you want to look for opportunity, you want to look for things that are like, like boring, dirty, or dangerous. Like those are usually the overlooked areas. <laughs> okay. um, boring, dirty, and dangerous. That's. I wouldn't say this is dangerous, mm-hmm. but like, right. you know, I think this, <laughs> like some people may think this is boring. We find it very entertaining, mm-hmm. but it's definitely, it could be, it can be dirty at times as we've learned, especially if you don't have a clean a seat in your right, public right. bathroom, it can be very dirty. But um, yeah, that would be my advice. Look at those areas and don't scoff at any opportunity. You know, right. so yeah. Even if it's related to toilets. <laughs> Even if it's toilet seats, that's right. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for your time. And we so look forward to, you know, following up. And um, we'll definitely be shooting you this episode. And we're hoping that you and your friends can tune in to, to our podcast, our Zulu podcast. And um, we're just looking forward to helping to, you know, share your information and this technology and, and do what we can to help solve the global sanitation crisis. Yep, so, absolutely. All right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so how was your summer in Boston? Was it amazing? It was. It was great. I had so much fun. I was able to spend a lot of time with my daughter and I got, a, I got to see a lot of the East Coast and such a great place. Like it's so quaint and these cute little towns and yeah, it was good. And definitely a highlight was meeting Kevin and... um yeah, he's just, um, it was interesting because when I looked up the information originally, I saw that he'd won an entrepreneurial award from the University of Utah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? And so I was like, there's definitely got to be a reason why we're meeting now because I'm from Utah. And so when I ended up, um, we didn't talk about that much in the interview, but when I talked to him personally, he explained that he was living out here and he took a couple classes at the University of Utah and um, with this invention, him and his friends won the Entrepreneurial Award from the But U of see U. what he was doing out here because I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. So he was out here actually um, ice skating. So he was, um, yeah, participating in, I guess, pre-Olympic. Um, that you is know. so yeah. cool. So he's and a really somehow diverse. somehow he wound his way into, into sanitation. Into sanitation, right? And now <laughs> All that's, roads lead to sanitation. That's yeah, right. that's right. <laughs> I think it's cool how they reversed it for, you were saying that they, um, originally it was like, you know, for a commercial purpose, mm-hmm. making sure that the, after a little while, the, the toilet seat lifted up. Right. Mm-hmm. But then you were saying that they interviewed a lot of they, women and said, why would we want the freaking right. seat up? We want it down. <laughs> exactly. But it, but and so they is, flipped it around uh-huh. where the the one for for cons, for consumer or home use. Mm-hmm. Residential. Is it's going to be like where it lower, the Brad Paisley It, it lowers dream. the seat. Mm-hmm. Takes all the work the out of it. Mm-hmm. Marriage saver. Yep, the marriage <laughs> saver. The Brad Paisley marriage. So saver. they just they just reversed it. It's pretty brilliant. Yep. So mm-hmm. so for the commercial, it, it it lifts up. I have yeah. a question though. Mm-hmm. I mean, usually in a commercial space, men and women have separate toilets. Right. So could they do a men's version and a women's version? That is a really good question. All right, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, we're going to call. We're going to follow we're up call on that. <laughs> I think in a public planning. restroom, I've seen, well, not a whole lot, but I've been in women's restrooms that, because a lot of women hover. And it's <laughs> yes, not, we do. And it's not like a straight shot. And no, sometimes the seat, <laughs> seat gets hit. <laughs> 
<laughs> which, sometimes there are casualties involved. Yes. But which I thought was like amazing. Like, what? I just thought men hit the seat, but women hit the seat too. Just clean it up. Even when I'm even if I go in there first and I see that that's not been done, I'll do it. I'm not gonna sit on it. Yeah. Right. But then I always think, what if some little girl comes in here? Yeah. Well, she has to like hike up there, get it. She's not gonna have the wherewithal to clean it. So mm-hmm. I don't know, people. If but you but sprinkle you know when that, you tinkle, be yeah, a sweetie, wipe the seating. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Be now, a sweetie. Now, now that you know this bacteria thing, you're just going to be a sitter or just sit. No. Because <laughs> you're thinking, Mentally, I, I just can't do it. You're I like, it's not I, as I can bad eat a salad off this thing. I might as well just sit down. <laughs> it's not as bad can't as the cutting it. board. I can just sit here for a while. Well, yeah. Suzanne, um, thank you for being so on the ball, even when on vacation, visiting your daughter, always looking for great opportunities to meet people in the sanitation space. And Kevin, thank you so much for your interview. And thank you guys for joining us. We will catch you next time. Thank you for listening to the Zulu Podcast. Follow us on social media at our links in the show notes below. To learn more, visit our website, Zulu.org. If you liked the podcast, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. For even more Zulu fun, send us an email with your toilet stories to podcast at Zulu.com for a chance to be featured on the podcast. This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water, and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com.